All right, let's take a look at building a component. On my static site, I have a Q&A component, and it's very simple. Uh, it shows a title, and when you click on the title, it shows an answer as well as a link um, that uh, has a little bit more information. So first thing we want to do is jump back into our project and create a new component. So I am in the content project. I'm going to be adding it to the general folder under the content components, as this is a component I'll be dragging onto the page. I'm just going to call this q and I'll be adding a .content.xml file to it. The primary type is CQ component. I'll name it uh, question and answer. And I'll be adding a component group. And I'll be adding it to the AEM CAS demo uh, group here. So that it'll show up on our sidekick under this. Next thing we want to do is create a JSP. And this JSP should have the same name as the folder I created. So q-n-a.jsp. And it has the include for our global JSP, which has all of our uh, standard tag libs in there. So that's great. Uh, next, what we want to do is take a look at the static markup um, that I created and that we'll be working against. And here it is. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, we have a question section, and we have an answer section, and with the answer, we have um, our Seymour link down here. So let me go ahead and just copy and paste this in. All right. So let's start moving through and filling out all the data points that we need. Um, at this point, we haven't actually defined where we'll be, where we'll be pulling them from. Um, we'll just uh, define them as we go and then uh, define the inputs as we need later on. So coming through here, um, we don't actually need a href for this since this is really just a toggle button. Um, next up, we have our open and close links. Uh, these are going to be hard-coded. Um, but because these are hard-coded, they don't lend themselves great to translation. So if I'm on an English site, open and close make a lot of sense. If I'm on a French site, um, the words open and close probably don't make too much sense. So it's always good practice to localize these, um, even if you don't necessarily know that you'll be um, localizing or using a localized version uh, immediately. So it's pretty easy to do. So let's just go ahead and uh, take a look at how to do it. We want to use the out-of-the-box uh, i10n APIs. And we can just pass it the sling request, and this is going to um, derive the uh, locale to use from the sling request here. So we can just say i18n.get. We're going to pass it the string open. So if you define any translations for the string open, they'll be used here. And we can do the exact same thing for close, passing close instead. OK, next up is the question field. So this is going to be authorable. So this is something we, we do want authors to be able to change. Uh, the best way to do this is to use the CQ text um, tag library. So the way this works is you pass in the property from which you will read the value from. And since we're creating this, I'm just going to say it's going to be a field called question on the node or a property called question on the node. Um, we can actually escape it, which is great uh, to prevent cross-site scripting and that sort of thing. So I'm going to set this to true. Um, and then if we needed to, we could do a couple other things like set the tag name. In this case, we uh, don't want it to be a block element. Uh, it defaults to a div. So I'm going to set a span. So all of this is on one line here. And at this point, I can delete my placeholder text. There we go. Next up is the answer. And again, this is something that we want um, authors to be able to edit and define. So I'm going to go ahead and just replace this text here. Um, in this case, we'll pull from a property called answer. Uh, the uh, tag name that we'll wrap this with will be a div because we actually do want this to be a block element, and we do want to escape it. You'll notice because we are defining the tag name as div here, it's going to wrap all the contents of this in a div. So really, we can just get rid of this uh, wrapping div since it's extra. Back down here, we have Seymour, and again, this is one of those hard-coded links, so let's just copy our i18n. There we go. Now we have our Seymour, and it's ready for translation. Last up is our um, page links here. So the first thing we want to do, and this is a function of how CQ stores um, reference data, um, we'll actually be storing the path to the page that we want to link to within CQ. So the first thing we want to do is pull out the path, and I'll be using the properties.get method and saying that we'll be storing it in a property called Seymour path, and I'm going to be adding, um, uh, setting a default as blank. Then what we want to do, and I'll be adding 
the import for this and uh shortly, um, is we actually want to turn this path into a page. And by default, because, of re because we're using the global.jsp, we have access to an object called the page manager. And we can pass in the similar path. And this will uh, resolve it to a page object if, uh, if the path actually maps to a page. So this is pretty nice. At this point, we can come in here and we can simply grab the Seymour page get path. And note that this does not include the extension. So I'm keeping the .html hard-coded into the, the page here since this is going to always be a hyperlink to a page. And then we can add the title here, get title. And now we're actually pulling out all the information for the Seymour uh, page link. One thing we want to do is make sure that we XSS protect um, this content. Uh, for these, we're using the CQ uh, text tag library, which does that for us with escape XML. But this um, is actually subject to XSS uh, attacks if, uh, if a malicious author puts some uh, JavaScript in or accidentally does so. So let's go ahead and use the XSS library that CQ provides. Because this is a Sling service, we have to actually get it um, through the sling.get service. And we cannot just say new XSS API. That would, that would break. That would be a, a null object. Um, so let's go ahead and just say new code for HTML, since that's what we're using it for here. So we're almost done. The last thing we want to do is pass this path to the resource resolvers mapped up uh, method. And this is in case there's any sort of mapping going on that needs to take effect um, as, we, uh, as we write this out to the page. So at this point, we look like we're in really great shape. Um, we essentially have uh, all the data points pulling out. And the next thing we want to do is just put a little bit of um, error checking in to make sure that our components are actually properly initialized and we don't throw null pointer exceptions. OK, so one issue that we have here is uh, if Seymour page um, is not defined, the, or the Seymour path is not defined, the page is actually null, and we can throw a null pointer exceptions down here. So we really don't want that. Um, what we want to do is handle this uh, case um, in uh, a couple ways. Um, so one thing, and, and this is a requirement uh, you know, made up for the demo, is we want to make sure that question, answer, and see more path are all completed before uh, we display anything to the author. Uh, and if any of these are not filled out, we don't want to display anything to the end user at all. Um, so what we want to do is basi basically check all those data points prior to actually rendering any of this markup. So let me just go ahead and quickly grab. I'm going to grab the question and the answer. And so now we have all these data points and we can check them. So what we want to do is right after we essentially grab our services um, and our uh, data points that we want to test, we can just do a quick test here. And it's going to be very simple. So what we have here now is checking to see if any of these data points are empty or null. Um, if they are and it is edit mode, so we actually want to, to behave differently if we are in edit mode versus any other mode, such as preview or disabled, which is used on publish. So basically, um, if in edit mode, do something, and uh, we always simply just want to return. Um, if we're in publish mode, or, or disabled, if you will, um, we, we don't want to display any of this markup here. So to do this, what we need to do is grab the wsend mode from the request. And then what we want to do is check to see if that mode is edit. If the mode is in edit, what we want to do is display the placeholder icon, uh, one of the default um, icons in CQ. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the markup for that. OK, so there we go. This is the, um, this is the HTML that is used to display the placeholder icon. In this case, I'm using the text placeholder. Um, and so now, if any of these fields are not filled out, uh, the component won't display the markup here, and we won't throw any exceptions. So this is pretty nice. And if you look at this, we kind of have this uh, separation of what uh, of of our uh, of our code and our presentation of markup. So up here we have our service and utilities, 
here we have our component uh, properties and data. Here we have some component in init checks. And then here is our component presentation. So it's a fairly nice separation uh, considering all of this is in a single file. The next thing we need to do is actually collect the data for the question answer and see more link. And to do that, we'll be creating a dialog. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste um, some handy dialog XML in uh, that I keep around just for this sort of thing. Uh, but what we wanna do is create a dialog.xml. And here we go. I've given it a uh, question of, or a title of question and answer. Our, our first tab, or in our only tab, is called Q&A. And this is where we'll be putting our input fields. So I'll go ahead and uh, type the first one out first. It's gonna be um, the question field. It's gonna have a JCR primary type. And this is going to be CQ widget. Uh, next up is our field label. So this is the actual title that shows up to the authors. It's going to be the question. Uh, next up is the name. Um, and this is the going to correspond to the actual property name. So we want to make sure that this uh, is equal to this here. So we'll do dot slash. And this dot slash just, uh, enforces that it's a write um, property and not a read-only property. And then we'll give it an X type of text field. So there we go. Uh, we can do the same thing for answer very quickly. And for the answer, we're going to change the X type to text area because we want multiple lines. And for Seymour, uh, we'll be starting it to the Seymour path uh, with a path field X type. So there we go, now we have our dialog defined. The last thing we need to do is incorporate the CSS and JavaScript into our component. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the basic client lib structure quickly. And note that this is all under the Q&A component for right now. Okay, I've created this basic structure here. I'm gonna just go ahead and quickly fill it out. We're gonna give the .contentXML for the client lib uh, the standard CQ. Uh, colon client library uh, primary type, sorry, client library folder, I should say. The category, uh, we're actually going to be using the category that we defined um, in the all client libs under Etsy client libs AMCast demo all. So if you remember, we have a AMCast demo components client library, and these and anything in this client library is packed up and put into the all. So this is a great, uh, a great client library for us to use and target for our individual components. So now we have this. And what we want to do is uh, we're going to be creating Q&A.CSS and also a Q&A.JS. And we'll be putting those in here. Okay, I have the Q&A, CSS, and JS. Next thing we want to do is just copy and paste this into the uh, copy and paste the JS and CSS that I have created for the static site. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this in. Um, so you're going to notice that this is actually unobtrusive JavaScript. So this um, is going to be loaded at the bottom of the page with our all client library. And it's actually binding uh, the click event on the question element um, that's scoped by this very long, ugly uh, class name. And this, is, uh, this class name actually matches the path to the component. And this is purely um, purely stylistic on my part. Uh, it's just good to make sure that this is unique so other components don't accidentally um, start uh, modifying and, and binding events to other components uh, that they shouldn't be or, or unintentionally. Um, so this is a pretty good pattern uh, of just scoping, scoping all your JavaScript via a class that's prefixed with JS, so everyone knows that it's for JS purposes and then it's a unique identifier down to the component name. Um, again, uh, everyone has their own flavor of this, uh, but uh, I find this to be pretty straightforward and easy to follow. And all this does is toggle the various elements within the Q&A component. So next up is the CSS, and this should be fairly quick. There's one oddity in the CSS. Uh, I've actually split this out into behavioral styles and into component styles. These component styles are more uh, have more to do with branding, so it has things like um, the color, uh, borders, padding, uh, that type of thing. Whereas down below here, I have some behavioral styles. Uh, and these 
these really influence and are supported by the JavaScript behaviors. So I'm actually going to break these out. Um, I'm going to, going to keep the behavioral styles with the actual component. Um, and again, they're scoped with this JS selector, so it uh, implies that there's some, um, uh, these have some impact on the JavaScript. And that these other styles for the components are more branding and if it really could change from site to site if we chose to use this component across multiple sites. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those to our Etsy client libs and cast demo all styles, which is where our, our main styles reside. Um, and I'll add these just to the bottom here. Um, and uh, if any other uh, AM cast demo site were to use this in the future with a totally different style and color scheme, um, they could just simply change these styles and everything would just work from a functional perspective. All right, so now all we have to do is build and let's check it out. So I'm gonna come back to my local author and actually one thing before we check, I neglected to add my import. So let me go ahead and just do that quickly. All right, let's come back here and I'll refresh my author. And let's see if we run into any issues. I'm gonna first go into the design mode. I'm gonna make sure that uh, I have the sidebar parses configured to allow the question and answer. I do, that's great. Let me go back to our edit mode. Select this, go ahead and drag a component in. Um, this is great, so here's the placeholder, uh, placeholder icon that we put before because we don't have this configured yet. So we have our question, our answer, and our see more. And I'll say what is the meaning of Here is 42. And I'm gonna go ahead and just leave Seymour blank for now, just to make sure that we still get our placeholder icon since this isn't fully configured. We do, it's great. And I'm gonna go ahead and link out to the Geometrics English site. And there we go, this looks pretty good. Let me just clear my cache and refresh to ensure that all the front end assets are, are loading properly. Okay, let's click this and look at that. Now we have the answer is 42 and we can see more um, on the English site here. Go ahead and close it. 